Hey guys, Kara Snyder here from karasnyder.com. Thanks for joining in with me for day two of this 30-day journey, I guess you can call it, that we're going to take as we talk about depression and just, um, just sharing God's Word to just help you through this time and help you to see that He is there. He loves you. He cares about you. He hasn't forgotten you and, and that there's hope, that there's help. I know just in my journey and my process, in, in going through that hard time in my life, I wish I would have had something like this that I could turn to because I know even as a believer, because at the time when I fell into the, the biggest battle, the biggest part with my depression, I um, was leading worship with my husband. So I wish I would have had something like this to help me understand that um, I wasn't crazy and that what I was going through was real because y'all, the struggle is real. It is totally real, and I totally get it, and I, and I believe that's why God led me to do this with you guys for the next 30 days. So we are on day two, and the scripture that I'm going to be focusing on for us today is um, Jeremiah 1, verse 5. And this says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. And again, that's Jeremiah one five. So you may be like, what in the world? Why is she using this scripture? So just go with me here for a minute. And, and as I'm having this conversation with you, maybe you're drinking your coffee this morning. I don't really know, but think about this. Or you may be watching this at night. Um, I know that in the, the hardest struggle with my depression, I would have these thoughts of um, feeling just worthless and hopeless and useless and like I I was made for no reason I was just kind of taking up space right like I was a burden to everybody um, I was an accident I wasn't supposed to be here there was really nothing intended for me I'm just taking up space so so why bother being here so again that's what depression does to you right it takes your your um, desire to want to live away, it, it makes you feel like you have nothing to live for, that you are a waste, and um, that you're not needed here. And so, at least for me, when I fell into the, the darkest, hardest part, that's where it had me. And um, and through these days, I'll even talk to you guys just about some some technical stuff with depression and with your brain, but it, it does make you where it, it is a struggle to get up out of the bed and function. Right, some of you may be at a point where to get up and go to work, it is hard, or to just get up and change from pajamas to yoga pants, or just get up and brush your teeth. Um, it is a struggle. It is a true struggle, and so it gets you there um, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. I remember even watching TV was a huge deal. I had to be very careful about what I watched because. It was like those things that I would watch on TV would go into my mind. And if I watched something sad, I would put myself there. Or something scary, it would just go to the extreme. So depression takes you to that extreme of saying, you weren't needed here. You're not wanted here. Why? Why bother? Why bother staying here? And Jeremiah, I love it because God is very specific with Jeremiah. So just a little background on him. And I was reading this little thing right here. Um, this is good to have. Anytime someone reads scripture to you, by the way, even when I read it, go read it for yourself. Check that scripture for yourself. Ask God to help you and say, what is it that you want to teach me from your word? But it just talks about how um, Jeremiah, he stood alone for God. Um, he stood alone. And um, it talks about how he bears his soul to readers. He struggled. He was like, God, why? Why would you use me? Why would you pick me? He he pleaded with God to tell him, you know, he was too young. He had no experience. He had no eloquence in, in the way to talk. You know, he had all these reasons for why he wasn't good enough for God's call. And this goes on to say, it says, God often chooses unlikely instruments to do his work. And even in Ephesians, it talks about how God created all of us to do good work. So what I want you to hear from me today, I, what God wants you to hear is that before you were even formed in the womb, 
of your mother. He was thinking about you. He was putting thought into you. You matter to him. It goes on to say, before you were born, uh, another uh, form of scripture says, I consecrated you. I set you apart. I, God, appointed you. And he tells Jeremiah, I appointed you to be a prophet to the nations. And he's wanting to say to you, I was getting the scripture pulled back up. He's wanting to say to you, hey, you are not an accident. You're not here just taking up space. I made you. I spent time on you. I thought about you. I thought about what I was putting inside of you. And you are needed. You are needed here. And what I set you apart to do, nobody else can do. No one else was created to do that. It's kind of like a puzzle. You know, when you're, you have all these pieces, not one piece makes the whole puzzle. You need all the pieces. And if one is missing, the puzzle is not complete. And that is just like you and just like me. If you were missing, the puzzle would be incomplete. It wouldn't, it wouldn't come together. So, so you're not an accident. You're not taking up space. You are not a burden. Um, you are needed. You were created for a specific purpose. You are here for such a time as this. So I get it. I know depression tries to tell you that you can't, that you're not, that you want, that you never will. But God says, yes, because I thought about you a long time ago, and I created you, and I knitted you together, and I put these things inside of you to use because I do want you. I desire to have a relationship with you. I desire to use you because I put all these things in you for a reason. So that's where I want us to stop today. And I want you to go and to, to talk with God and to be like Jeremiah and even David. Be honest with him and tell him where you're at and ask him to show you, to remind you, to love on you, to, to remind you that he did make you for a reason and a purpose. And maybe this scripture is what you needed to hear because I know that depression tries to, to get you rock bottom to say you're not needed here. And if you were gone, nobody would miss you. But that is a lie. If you were gone, we would miss you. And no one could do what God's created you to do. So you're needed here and you matter. And in this time, as you are walking to get healed and to get restored, cling to this to know, okay, I'm not an accident. I'm not just a blob of matter walking around. I'm here for a reason and a purpose. And I may not know what that is right now, but I know that I was created on purpose for a purpose. Okay, so Jeremiah 1.5, go read that. Ask God to just let that pour into your heart and in your soul. Thank you again for joining in with me. Remember, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can find me on Kara Snyder. Dot com. Find me on Instagram at Kara Snyder and even on Facebook at Kara Snyder. I try to keep it super simple and all the same. Uh, I am praying for you guys and um, I will talk to you again soon.